Thank you for joining again today for this moment around God's Word and prayer. We're going chapter by chapter, one day per chapter through 2 Corinthians. So I'd like to invite you to be reading through this book with me together. And today we're on chapter 3. I invite you to tomorrow read chapter 4. But we're in chapter 3 and verse 7 where Paul says, Now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory, transitory though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? He's talking about what we get to participate in through Christ, through his resurrection spirit, his glory, his grace can give us boldness and courage that normally does not mark our lives. This is our time to stand up. This is our time to be bold. We're in the midst of a crisis right now. People are asking all kinds of questions about life and its meaning. And we have this opportunity to share Christ with the world around us. And it's our time to remember that we're people of the Spirit. Now he said when Moses went up to receive the Ten Commandments engraved in stone, that was the Old Testament law. And even that had glory with it. Even though the law pointed out our sin, but it gave us no power to overcome our sin. But Moses came down from that mountain, his face was glowing, and he actually put a veil over his face. And the reason was not because it was blinding to other people, but because that glory was fading, and he didn't want people to see that fading glory. But we now, in Christ, have the Spirit of God. It's a glory that doesn't fade. And so in verse 12, Paul says, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We're bold. We're not apologetic. We're not cowards. We're not fearful and panicking like everybody else. We have the Spirit of God. We have the glory that does not fade. And so he says, we have, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. That's just a word that's in my heart for us today. You have the Spirit of God. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. He goes on in the next verse, verse 13, to say, We're not like Moses, who put that veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. So they couldn't see the glory fading. The glory of the old was only a prelude to the glory of God's Spirit with us now in Christ. And it makes us bold. Since we have such a hope, we are bold. And then Paul concludes the chapter by saying, now, now the Lord is the Spirit. We're talking about the Spirit, that greater glory. The Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. For we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So there it is. We abide in Christ we worship Him, we spend time with Him, we listen to Him, we gaze on His glory, and God's Spirit fills us with God's glory and His boldness. May that be so in our lives today. Let's pray to that end together. Our Father, we thank You that Your Spirit has come to us, not a fading glory, not a glory that we'll, that, that we'll apologize for someday, but the glory of Your Spirit. Help us to behold You today. Help your presence to transform us more and more like Jesus. And we pray you'll put the boldness and courage of your spirit in our hearts today. For we have your spirit and we are yours. And we thank you that you're our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.